Good Friday morning, my dear Christian brother or sister. I hope that you are coming to the end of a productive week. I hope you're looking forward to a wonderful weekend, which of course includes our morning worship service on Sunday. But more than anything else, I hope you're living your very best life in Jesus Christ. Well, yesterday, Nancy and I were blessed to help at Landry's School, well, actually at Camp Whitney, for their end-of-the-year spring picnic. And it was a lot of fun, spending time with our little guy and watching him play with his school friends. You know, as a former teacher, I always enjoyed just standing back and watching kids play, because their joy is contagious. And it always reminds me of how Jesus said we're to be like children in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven. You know, I wish I could say I've always had a cheerful heart, but truth be told, even at a young age, I found myself weighted down by the world. Worry, fear, doubt. It, in many ways, it established a pattern really early of thinking that has led me to much sorrow in my life. And eventually would lead me to become bitter and hostile to others and frankly self-destructive to myself. It used to be that I faced every day with dread, with worry, with fear, and I never seemed to have the capacity to be truly joyful. And so <clears throat> I consider it one of the greatest blessings of my life that the Lord has bestowed on me uh, the development of a cheerful heart. There are so many verses in the Bible that remind us of the importance of maintaining a positive, cheerful spirit, as well as recognizing the cost of not doing so. This is not a matter of optimism or pessimism, but what I referred to in an earlier devotional last year as biblical realism. I mean, there are so many verses, verses such as Proverbs 12, 25, an anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. Uh, Proverbs 15, 13, a happy heart makes a face cheerful, but a heartache crushes the spirit. Proverbs 15, 15, all the days of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful heart has a continual feast. And, of course, the one my mother always quoted was Proverbs 17, 22, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Watching kids reminds me of the vital importance of something that we have a tendency to lose as we become adults, and that is the importance of simple childlike play. One of the greatest gifts the Lord has given me is the ability to play again. Play with Landry, play with Nancy, play with words in writing, playing verbally in conversation, playing an instrument. They, they're all part of this gift. By maintaining a cheerful heart and a playful spirit, I've discovered that our Lord, what our Lord was trying to tell me all this time that having a tired, overworked mind filled with worry and doubt and anger and negativism will not only make you have a miserable life, but it can and will affect your physical and spiritual well-being by blocking you from receiving that abundant, productive, joyful life he intends you to have. You see, negativity holds a power to drain our spirit and crush our spirits. Excuse me, drain our strength and crush our spirits. <clears throat> like dried up bones, and optimism has the power to do just the opposite. I mean, I hate to say it this way because it sounds like a bumper sticker, but positive thinking leads to positive living. I fear too many of us take ourselves way too seriously too much of the time, and it steals our joy in living and, frankly, the joy in all our salvation. I guess what I'm trying to say is I have finally learned through the Lord to look forward to playtime. So today as we approach the weekend, I call upon us all to find some time to just play. Play a game with your family. Exchange jokes with a loved one. Do something you enjoy that cheers your heart and relieves your mind of the adult stuff <laughs> for a while. So I guess I'm, today I'm calling upon us all to practice healthy thinking. Thinking positive, affirming, encouraging, Christ-like thoughts. And exercise our faith in trusting God that always as it should be, we are in good hands and we can play. You know, Mom used to say this. I'd be stuck in my room for hours and hours and hours. And finally, she'd burst the door open and she'd say, You've been stuck in this room all day. Get out of here and go play. So I'm learning to play. I think we all should just like a kid at a picnic. 
I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope, to, like I said, to see you guys on Sunday. I want you to know that I'm here should you need me. I truly love you all, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.